Hi there, it's Tuesday the 26th of March and we're going to do another cryptic crossword today from today's uh, Daily Telegraph. Um, I've started doing these about two weeks ago and I'm really enjoying it and I'm getting reasonably good feedback as well on the channel so thanks for any comments or um, that you've made up to now. Um, and if you're new to this, uh, basically what this will be is a walkthrough for beginners. I'll take it step by step um, explaining my thinking out loud as we try and solve this puzzle. Um, so to start with, just a, a quick overview on cryptic crossword clues. Um, if you've watched the videos before, you might have heard me say this a hundred times already, but uh, if not and you're new to it, then let me just describe the anatomy a little bit of a cryptic crossword clue. Um, most cryptic crossword clues have are made of two parts. It's basically two clues in one. Um, you have one part, which is a definition, which indicates the answer. And definition is sort of a loose word for it. Basically, it's a... It's a word that indicates the answer. As I said, it's not necessarily a strict definition that you'll find in the dictionary. Um, and then you have another part of the clue, which is more of a wordplay, which might involve anagrams or cutting words up and putting them back together again. Um, there's all sorts of different types of clue. And I'm going to make a video series on, on each different type you can find in a cryptic crossword. Um, but for now, as I go through the crossword, I'll talk about how to identify the wordplay or identify the definition. Um, the last thing to say about the clues is that a definition is either at the beginning or the end of the clue. There's pretty much no exceptions to that. Um, so it's always at the beginning or the end. So if you find the wordplay near the end, then you know the definition's at the beginning, that type of thing. Okay, so let's get on with today's uh, crossword and see how we go. Okay, one across. Um, cross I covered in ship's hold. Um, so again, we're looking here for, as I mentioned, where is the definition going to be and where is the, the wordplay going to be? Um, I think I've said, said this a few times in previous videos, but I look at things that might indicate place um, or position and um, I also look for verbs that are or maybe indicating some sort of wordplay. So this one, cross I recovered in ship's hold. Um, I mean, in here is maybe giving me some sort of wordplay. There may be, it might be that something about cross I recovered is within a word for ship. And then this apostrophe S might indicate the, it's like a link to the definition. So sometimes you might get the wordplay, apostrophe S, definition. So the wordplay is the definition. Um, so hold is probably the definition here. Um, cross I recovered. I'm not 100% sure what's happening here. Could be, I'm not sure, it could be an anagram maybe, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but let's come back to this one, we'll move on and then we'll come back to, uh, we'll come back to it if we can get some more parts to it. Uh, let's try five across. The woman's abandoning husband after rotten presence. Mm. So, again, what could indicate wordplay here? Um, a word like I look at the verbs as well. Anything ending in ing is usually some sort of indication of the wordplay, like you're Sometimes the verb is leaving, so you're you know, you're leaving something, or taking off something. This one's abandoning. That uh, you're abandoning husband, so I think you're taking the letter H away from a word for the the woman. So the woman is abandoning husband. So um, that could be the woman could be her, I suppose. If you take off the husband, you just left with the er. Um. And then the S is, so it could be hers actually. So we take off the husband, we left with ERS. And then that comes after rotten. So after a word for rotten, which probably means presence or presents is the, is the definition here. So reading the surface clue, the surface reading of the clue, the woman's abandoning husband after rotten presence. The setter is trying to make us feel it, I think, of presence as in um, a noun. Um, it could also be presents as in the verb. 
They do this a lot. They use all, like, these are called heteronyms, the words that are spelled the same, um, but pronounced differently. And the, the way they word the clue sometimes leads you down a path to pronounce a word one way, and then your brain is just thinking of that that way, and then you can't think of any other types of uh, definition or meaning for that for that word. So I'll have to keep an open mind doing this, but I think presence or presence is the actual, uh, is the definition. Um, I'm fairly confident it ends in ERS from, from hers having the, the H removed. So that means we're looking for a word for rotten, like a three letter word for rotten. Could be off, I suppose it's off, isn't it? So we have offers. So as you can see, this actually is the verb rather than the noun. So the crafty setter is trying to take us down the noun route here, thinking of plural of of present, but in actual fact, um, it could be the uh, the verb to offer and to present, or it could be actually, I suppose, yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm fairly confident that's the answer. Let's try. We go nine nine across. Let's see if we can get some more letters here. Spanish golfer next to tree plays regularly and badly. Mm. So <clears throat> looking at this one, um, again another. I'm just going to adjust my light. One sec. It's a bit too bright in my eyes. Um, another when you're looking at at wordplay. We're looking for wordplay. A word that comes up a lot is regularly. And what that indicates is taking alternate letters from a word or words. So we could be taking, for example, if it's plays regularly, um, we could be taking like the L and the Y from plays. I'll do it down here as you can see. The L and the Y from plays. Um, it could, we could be taking like the R, the E, the L and the Y from tree plays. That could be what it means. So this is like the word play is here, which would imply badly is the definition. So and is used as a, you know, like I said, the, the, a cryptic crossover clue is, is two clues in one. So sometimes they, they write it like word play and definition or definition and word play. So the and can be like a linking word between the word play and the definition. So I think this means badly. So we have Spanish golfer. Next to, so that's a word for Spanish golfer. Next to, tree plays regularly. So I think it does. And looking at the, the sort of the tense here, or, you know, we've got badly. So it looks like my theory about the L and the Y is right. So it could even be um, R-E-L-Y. Um, Spanish golfer, off the top of my head, I can think of Seve. So if we have Seve um, here, and then we have the alternate letters of three plays, which is R, E, L, Y. We get severely, and severely means badly. You see that? So quite nice, I quite like that one. Could be everyone's favourite golfer there. Um, okay, what's this one? Ten across. A small amount, that is missing, I guess. Now, what could this mean? Again, looking at the at the the, the verb ending in ing indicates wordplay. So, what's it saying? That is missing i. So we're we're removing an i from something. That is is very often abbreviated to ie. So it could be ie without the i, which is basically just an e. Um. The answer I mean the definition is guess. So it's a word for guess. And we have A, which if it's in the wordplay, A nearly always just stays as an A in the wordplay. So I think this word begins with an A. Small is very often uh, abbreviated to S. So that's the S. Amount. We need to find a synonym, a synonym for amount. Now if I'm right about this, that is missing. Then we have an E at the end. Um, and this means guess. So I'm trying to think of a word that means guess. That could be that could be assume, couldn't it? And I suppose yeah, a small amount is a sum. 
or an amount, sorry, is a sum. We have a small amount, this is a sum. Um, get back to the clue. And then ie without the i gives us just the e we get assume, which means guess. Cool, I like that clue, that's quite nice. Um, now, 12 across, we have found groom his stable. What does this mean? It's got a horsey theme. Probably means it's got nothing to do with horses. Again, the setters are always trying to throw you off the scent. Leads you down a garden path somewhere. Um, so what do you think the... I think I've seen groom before as an anagram indicator. Um, there's nine letters in the in the answer. I'm just looking at the word here. There's nine letters in his and stable, so it could be an anagram of his stable, and it means found. I'm just looking at the uh, at the letters of his stable. I think establishes is, is uh, jumping out at me there. Which does if you establish establish means found, doesn't it? If you establish a a company, you're founding a company. And it's it is if I could spell it. It is definitely an anagram of uh his stable. Is what would we do wrong? Establish I S H right that took far too long to type. <clears throat> nice. Good. Okay, well, we go for 13 across. A court follows former lover's demand. Now, if you see any words here indicating place, position, anything like that, I've got this word follows. So, it looks like a court comes after something former or former lover. And then we have that apostrophe S as well, like we had up in the, in one across. So I think um, the definition here is demand. Um, now A, as I said, nearly always just is an A when it's in the wordplay. It's a straight A. Another thing to say about uh, cryptic crossword clues, there are, are no superfluous words in a cryptic crossword clue. You have to use every single word. Mean you know, it matters. Um, so A is going to be an A. And it comes after. Now, former lover is your X. Nearly always is coded as X. So we put, let's put X in. And then we have the A. And then court is abbreviated to CT. And we have exact, which is a demand. Does that make sense? There are rules about abbreviations. They have to be, you know, existing abbreviations. You just can't abbreviate any word. You know, um, you have to be able to find the abbreviation in the dictionary. So court is abbrevi can be abbreviated to CT. Nice. Okay, well, we try 14 across and see. Rook caught in trap crow. And there's a question mark here as well. Now, a lot of the times the question marks, you know, punctuation marks in general don't mean anything. I tend to just ignore them. Unless it's a, a whole sentence with a question mark at the end, because that can be shown as more of a whimsical um, clue rather than a strict definition and a wordplay clue. So, Rook caught in trap, crow. Again, caught in is indicating a position, isn't it? It's some sort of... um. So, Rook is within a trap. And so, the definition is crow here. I've, we, I've put money on it. Rook, you know, you get a lot of, if you want to learn some abbreviations, just learn the abbreviations of chess pieces because they get used a lot. Rook is an R, Knight is an N. Um, so we've got, we've got a letter R inside a word, a three-letter word for trap. And it means crow. Now, how many meanings of crow are there? You can crow. The bird, crow could be to, to boast. Um, I'm not sure. I can't think of the word off the top of my head. I'll, I know there's an R in there, but that's all we know for now. 
Um, maybe we'll try some of these down clues now, just since we've got some letters here. Um, try and fill up this corner. Let's do one down. Nurse threatening to cut hip. Nurse threatening to cut hip. What's happening here? Um, this to cut is giving me wordplay um, vibes. So we're cutting it'll be a word for threatening and we're cutting a word for hip off it. That means nurse. So the, the I'd say the the definition here is nurse. Um not jumping out at me this one. Yeah, let's come back to that one. Let's try two down. Request from present jockey about Ascot's finale. So, where's the definition and where's the wordplay here? So, there's a link word here from that very often indicates, can tell you where the definition is. So, usually the definition comes before the word from. I'll do it here again. Before from is usually the definition and afterwards is the wordplay. And then in the other way around, you use for. You can see for a lot where you got the wordplay for definition. So here we are. This is the wordplay. Present jockey about Ascot's finale. Request is the definition. And we've got some letters here. Um, what could this be? Well, Ascot's finale. Is referring finale is is a, is referring to the last letter of um, Ascot, which we've got here the T. So, I think we need a word for jockey that goes around Ascot. It's final. It goes around the T, and then we have present, or it could be present. Um, it's come up already, and this cl this crossword hasn't present. Um, <clears throat> the request. Yeah, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing that one either. Well, this is pretty tricky today. Let's try three down. Clean axe. Now, this is one. All oh, my big talk about the cryptic crossword clues, all having two parts: a definition and a wordplay. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to that, and this is one of them. So this is a double definition clue. If you see a clue with literally two words, it's pretty much going to be a double definition. So so the answer is going to going to mean both these things. So it's going to be a word for clean and a word for axe. Um, looking at what we got here, I think that's going to be scrub. What is wrong with my typing today? Okay, so it's literally a double definition, meaning scrub. Um, what have we got? Four down. Wisely only half engaged in telephone banking. So what's indicating word played for me here is this engaged and in. So it's telling me that maybe something here is within a word for telephone. Um... And only half is indicating maybe only half of a word, maybe only half of wisely is in a word for telephone. And the, so the definition is banking. Um, so looking here at what we got, I think we need to telephone someone is to ring someone. So let's say we have ring on the outside. Now we need a word. Now we need half of wisely inside that. So looking at this, we've got the L here. So if we only use half of wisely, it's E-L-Y. And we get relying, which means banking. If you're relying, if you're banking on someone, you're relying on it, aren't you? So again, this is banking, not as in, you know, what might, you might be thinking about, which, especially where the crude clues written, telephone banking leads you down the finance path. That's not what this is about. This is about relying on someone. Cool. Let's try one across now. We've got a, some letters there again. Cross I recovered in shift hold. 
looking at these letters, I'm starting to think that there's a this is maybe an anagram of cross I and recovered as an anagram indicator. If that was the case, well, we need eight letters. There's six here. Ship is very often abbreviated to SS. And it says cross I is recovered in ship. So I think it might begin with an S and end with an S from the SS. So now we have a I cross mixed up in here. And it means hold. I mean, a word I can see there is scissors. Oh, yeah, it's that's a wrestling term, isn't it? like a scissors hold. When you hold someone between your legs, I think it's a scissors scissors hold. That's cool. That's a nice clue. I like that. And I haven't, I don't think I've seen recovered as a anagram indicator before. That's a cool one. Okay, nice. Let's try one down again. Nurse threatening to cut hip. Okay, if, I, if I'm right in what I thought before, and this means nurse, this is sister. I can see sister there now. Now, why is, where is it, the wordplay? What's the wordplay saying? Threatening to cut hip. Oh, nice. This is lovely, I think. So, a word for threatening is losing a word for hip. We're cutting hip from threatening. Word for threatening is sinister. Um, so we're taking out the I and the N, N. If you're hip, you're in. We're taking N out of sinister and we're left with sister. That's nice. Cool. Nice clue. Okay. Two down. Let's have a look. Request from present junk jockey about ask us for now. Okay. Request. This looks like an invite, doesn't it? And so how does that work? We got, okay, so present in this case means in. If you're present, you're in. And then we have to jockey about Ascot's finale, which we also mentioned already. That's the T. So we got Vi around T. So present, Vi around T, invite. Nice. Okay. Now let's see. Six down. Chaps. Chap playing bass in the main. Question mark. Playing is sometimes an anagram indicator. Although I'm struggling to see where the, that would leave the definition here. I think this might be one of these uh, sort of cryptic definitions where it's a bit of whimsical wordplay, whimsical sort of definition. In the main, some, okay, this might be more to do. So this is, the surface reading of this is letting you think of bass as in someone playing the bass. Um, but this in the main, I've seen main is used a lot more in the sort of this to describe the ocean. So maybe this is a is a bass because we're talking about being in the main, being like being in the ocean. So a chap playing bass in the ocean. I'm just looking at the letters here. I reckon this is fisherman. So, how's he playing the bat? I suppose, um, if you're, I suppose in one aspect you can say a fisherman is playing against a fish, I suppose. A bass is a fish, isn't it? In the sort of, some sort of competition to try and reel him in. That's quite nice. Because again, that's completely sent you off the wrong, you know, when you read it first, you've gone down a, totally different domain you're in the music domain an actual fact you should be in the you should be in the seafaring domain there oh nice seven down informed about entertaining entering incorrect due date um does this mean informed or due date here we have entering. This is given off like again my my little tip about looking for the ing words. So something is entering something. So about is entering incorrect due date. So I reckon informed is the definition. About can be a few things. It can be re re. It can also indicate some sort of flip, like reversing words. It can also be a c as in uh, circa. Um, 
So maybe incorrect due date, maybe incorrect here is indicating some sort of anagram of due date. Looks like it just from the letters that we've got. Um, this looks like informed. This looks like educated. And now we have the C from about, and it's entering an anagram of due and due date. Given this edu educated, nice, cool. Let's try eight down. Watch funny tapes, etc. Um. Funny here could indicate an anagram. So it could be an anagram of tapes, etc. And it means watch. Um, to look at these, what could be, what could that be? Spectate. Yes, to watch is to spectate. Nice, so you can see there, funny was the anagram indicator. This is the words you're going to be anagramming, and then it means watch. That's the definition. Cool. 16 across proof about European politicians' violent commotion. Um, what are we seeing? About is indicating wordplay. So it could be a word for proof around something, or it could be a word for proof flipped. Um, European is nearly always and just um, nearly always abbreviated to an E. Um, politician, this can be an MP. So it looks like from the letters we got here already, um, this could be an MP here. So this means violent commotion. Um, it looks like tempest to me. Oh, what's happened there? T. E M P E. Okay, Tempest. So how does that work in the wordplay? We've got um, European politician, and around that we have a word for proof, which is test. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Nice. Okay, we're making a bit of progress now. Eleven down. Animal capturing hearts. Rabbit. Again, here we have the ing word. This this is where the word play is going to be. So we've got a word for an animal around hearts. It's probably the we've got the h. It's, it's an abbreviation of hearts. Is h. So this means rabbit. Um, a rabbit can be the can be the animal, but can also sort of mean to to talk to chat to chat, which is a cat, which is the animal around hearts. Nice. Okay, let's try 14 across. We, we tried this once already. So we, had, we have a rook caught in trap. So there's definitely an R in here somewhere, and it's caught in trap, and it means the crow. Boast. Um, brag. Brag. The crow is the brag. So there's the R caught inside a trap. In this case, it's not trap the, the noun. It's trap the verb. If you bag something, you trap it. Okay, good. Okay, well, we try um, 21 across. I read right in front of social worker, question mark. Does the question mark mean anything? Not sure. Where's the definition? Where's the wordplay? Wordplay is indicated by me, me by this, in front of. So I think we have right, which is often abbreviated to an R, in front of a word for social worker. Question mark might mean, hmm, it was definitely an R here, and the the the, the definition is tirade, which is a rant, isn't it? So it's def, it's an ant as a social worker, isn't it? So we get R in front of social worker rant. Nice. Um, what we do now? We we'll try fifteen down. Joy after king ultimately reunites sons. Question mark. So, using my little rule, we have an after here, which indicates some sort of positioning. King. King is often uh, abbreviated to an R. So we have the R here. So it's probably a word for joy after. So this means it means sons. 
Um, no, it may not be a strict definition of sons because of the question mark. It might be like sons is an example of this. Um, so, or for joy after king, they are ultimately reunites. So it's ultimately reunites is the last letter of reunites. There's an S. So we have an S down here. We need a word for joy in here. Oh, this is nice. This is elations. Relations. So, in this case, sons, like I said at the beginning, you know, the definition is not necessarily something you'd find in the dictionary. If you look up relations in the, in the um, dictionary, you're not going to get sons as a definition. So, sons here is more of an example of, you know, it, son is a, is, is a relation. So, sons are relations. Um, more of an example of the answer. That's a nice clue, though. Let's try 19 across. Um, one who steals several grubby sandwiches on the way back. Wow. It's a long lot going on there. On the way back is making me feel something to do with wordplay, like something's been, you know, reversed. So that means the definition would be one who steals. What could this be? What the sandwiches? Grubby sandwiches. Oh, this is a hidden word. So sandwiches is indicating like a hidden word. Sometimes in clues you get words that are literally written. The answer is written in the clue. Sometimes forward, sometimes backwards. In this case, it's backwards. That's what's on the way back is. Here, on the way back is indicating backward. Sandwiches indicating it's a it's a hidden word. So within several grubby, there's a word written backwards for one who steals. And if you look here, it's look, it's burglar. That's a nice that's nicely hidden, that one. Let's try and type it nicely. Oh, nice. I like that clue. Let's try Twenty down. Split trousers initially after climbing tree. So again, we have a word indicating position here after, which makes me feel that, and also initially is very often used in wordplay, so it literally means the first letter of. So it's the first letter of trousers after climbing tree. Um, climbing. Could also mean, because this is a down clue, it could mean a word for a tree written backwards. So we're looking for a three word, three letter word for a tree. We have a T at the end. Three letter word for a tree ending in R. Just think of three letter trees. Elm, Ash, uh, Burr. So this is Rift. Yeah, which is a split. So the definition was split. Trousers initially is the T after the climbing tree. The tree is climbing in the sense that fur has been written up upwards. Cool. Okay, 25 across. A virtue of training pet. We have an A here. Again, indicating wordplay, which makes pet the definition. Training could be an anagram indicator, I think. So it looks like, I think we have an end, we have a, uh, an anagram of a virtue of, and it means pet. I'm just looking at that now. I think this is favorite. Nice. 21 down. Ponder gun finally going off. So, is going is in here, and going finally going off is in. Like, it smells of wordplay to me. So maybe a, the last letter of a word for a gun or something has been taken away, and it means ponder. Um, was ponder to think, review, rev. Uh, not sure. Let's come back. We'll come back. 26 down. 
declare golf club lacks power. Um, where's the wordplay here? I think it's, I think wordplay is here. And the reason I say that is we've got a word of like lacks. It, it sort of sounds like we're taking a letter away and power is very often abbreviated to P. So we need a word for a golf club without the letter P and it means declare. Um, we only need a golf club when we think of with a P in it as a putter. So we take off the P, we get utter to declare. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, 22 down. Stop heartless language. Um. So if something's heartless means take out a middle letter or take out the center of the word. So it either means stop or it means language. Mm, not sure yet. I'm going to try and get some more. Some more letters. Let's try 28 across. Maybe that'll help. Shoe without buying garments. So this could mean without as an, as an anagram indicator. So we could have a word for shoe without the letter A. Maybe a, without fine. Or without also can mean outside of. You know, the old fashioned word. Or you know, without, if you were without the walls, for example. You're outside of the walls. Um, so it probably means garments. But I can't see what this is yet. Shoe. No, I can't see it. Let's try this one. Hunted deer has gone astray, Charlie's admitted. So, admitted is giving me off the fact that Charlie is put into a word here. So, Charlie's probably abbreviated to a C, as in the, the phonetic alphabet. Um... So this probably means hunted. Gone astray is indicating an anagram to me. So it's deer has. Make an anagram of that and put a C in it. And we'll get a word for hunted. Uh, what could this be? It's going to end in ED. This is you know, it's nothing I do with anagrams. I'm looking at the tense of the word, of the definition, and what I think the definition is. So it was hunted. It's probably going to end in ED as well, the answer. So that leads us to make an anagram of that with a C in it. Um, we've got an H, probably C, searched. Searched. That's the answer there. Okay. Let's try 23 down. Mass above Pluto rising, question mark. Neptune, perhaps. Hmm. So again, this is indicating the place, the sort of position, isn't it? So it's maybe a word for mass above a word for Pluto, although it's rising. So again, a bit like the the tree clue we had before. Um, which one was that again? Twenty down where it was climbing. This is rising, so it's a word for Pluto written backwards. Um, and then it's Neptune. So we're talking planets here, or are we? I think we're, I think it, again, this uh, setter's trying to get you down the planet route, but I don't think it's about planets. Um, Pluto is also a dog. Yeah, this is God. I think if we have Pluto rising, we get God, which would make, yeah, Neptune's a sea god, isn't it? So mass is a sea of people, I suppose a mass is a sea god. Yeah, sea god. So the, so the definition there was Neptune, perhaps. So Neptune an, an ex, could be thought of, and one, of the, one of the definitions of Neptune could be a sea god. All right, let's try 28 across again. Shoe without fine garments. So we have word for a shoe 
means garments. No. Let's try 22 down because we've got an H here. Stop heartless language. Uh, there's a lot of languages in an H. But then I got Irish. We could have Irish, but then it doesn't really work. Oh, it's Finnish. So what have we got in here then? It, actually, the definition is stop. And the word plays a heartless language, so the finish has got two ends. We take out the middle, we take out the N, and we end up with finish, which means stop. That's cool, I like that one. Right, 28 across, come on, we have to get this. Shoe without fine garments. Um, this definitely ends in ING. Okay, this looks like clothing, just from the letters that are left. Um, so the shoe is a clog without fine. Fine is thin, so it was without in the sense of outside of. So the clog is outside of thin, and we get clothing. Nice, right, 21 down. Ponder, gun, finally going off. This is revolve. So a revolver is a gun. We've taken off the last letter, and we're left with revolve. And it means ponder. Well, I've never really heard of. I don't know. I mean, it l works from the wordplay point of view, but I'm not really sure I've used revolve as a to mean ponder before. But I'm sure it must be. Or well, it wouldn't be in there, I suppose. Okay, let's go on. We'll come back there if it's wrong. Okay, try twenty four across. Try ignoring a tango's allure. So again, here's the ing word. It's definitely giving me the uh, the wordplay indication. So we're ignoring um, ignoring as in we're rem rem removing a, maybe even t because tango, a bit like Charlie before tango, can be abbreviated to a t. So it looks like a word for try. We're moving the A and the T, and there we have the apostrophe S again. So that's is allure is the um is the definition. I think this is attempt, isn't it? It's like attempt to try is to attempt. Take off the initial A and T, and we have with tempt, which means allure. Okay, happy with that. Um, let's try eighteen down. Theater worker. Quick with sign of hesitation. Um, we have a word that with here, which is indicating some some wordplay. Sign of hesitation is nearly always er. So that means theater or theater worker is the definition here. So I'm going to put er in here. So we're looking for a word for quick. Yeah. Oh, this is prompter, isn't it? I'm just looking at the letters that we got. So prompter, someone who works in the theatre. So we have prompt, which is uh, a word for quick. And it's with sign of hesitation, with ER. Nice. Okay, we're very nearly finished now. Just this southwest corner, they call it. Um, excitement, fighting, lawsuit. No, can't see that. 29 across, come on. Hair is after the tailless bird. Wordplay again, remember? After, definitely sounds like it's a positioning thing. So a word for hair is after the tailless. So this, this means the definition is bird. The tailless is T-H. We take the tail off the, we get th. So I'm going to put this here. Because the word for hair comes after that. And we're looking for a word for a bird. This is thrush. So the hair is to thrush. Yeah, nice. Okay, 17 down. Draw conceptual picture. Um...
What could fit in there? What is the definition even? This looks like a double definition. It's definitely like a double definition. Um, draw a conceptual picture. Take a word for a conceptual. Oh, this could be abstract. Abstract is to draw. How do you spell abstract? S T R A. Abstract is to draw, but an abstract is also a um a conceptual picture, isn't it? Nice. That's a nice double definition. So again we got we got that heteronym thing going on where we've got abstract or abstract. Cool. Last one. Excitement fighting lawsuit. Um this is action. I think this is action. Yes. Action. Nice. So a lawsuit is an action, isn't it? Um why can't I see that action? Now how does the wordplay work here? Excitement fighting. Hmm, I don't understand the wordplay there. Excitement, fighting, lawsuit. Definitely, I can see lawsuit as a definition, as action. <clears throat> Excitement, fighting. Don't understand why that, I, I don't get it. Maybe you can, please, if you got this far and... <laughs> And you can help, please write in the comment why excitement fighting lawsuit is action. Like I say, I can see the definition. I just can't see the excitement fighting part. Um, cool. Okay, look, we, we got to the end. Um, hopefully you find that of interest and, uh, you know, of use as well. Some nice, some very nice clues in that uh, puzzle. Like I say, I've been doing this now for a couple of weeks. So I'm really enjoying it. So if you have got this far, please do like and subscribe. I'll be doing more of these. Um, and maybe leave me some comments if you have many suggestions of anything else I could do. Um, I also do like a, sh a series of shorts, which are literally a clue for the day where I just go through one clue and describe um, how you can solve it. And I'm coming up with a, a series of videos soon, which are more just a step-by-step, -step, like a complete ultimate guide to uh, cryptic crosswords. But that's the crossword solve for today. As I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Please come back again and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Okay, thanks.